Uh, hello, I'm Donna Gordy. I'm here on behalf of Arts Altoona Live, and this week we're interviewing Tom Schaefer. Uh, Tom is a man with many hats, but uh, today his hat is Penn State Altoona Community-Based Studies, uh, an initiative that they are working on in partnership with Allegheny Portage uh, National Historic Site, which is where we are uh, broadcasting from today. And um, so, Tom, would you like to introduce yourself and talk to us about what's coming up later in September? Gosh, okay. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to talk with you. Um, I manage and coordinate the Center for Community-Based Studies at Penn State Altoona, and for the past several years, we have worked on several small initiatives, uh, but a couple of big initiatives with Allegheny Portage Railroad uh, here with the Rangers. Here. And one of the initiatives, the one that's coming up in uh, just a little over a week, is the uh, Canal Jam 2017. Canal Jam 2017 is the actual second iteration of Canal Jam. Uh, and it's a really fun event. It's a uh, gathering of, uh, of uh, musicians, professional and amateur, amateur and, and professional historians, um, storytellers, and it's really in the spirit of the 19th century kind of uh, gatherings uh, that were multifaceted, uh, but kind of uh, kind of uh, were there to kind of get to know each other and get to know the, the culture and the people. So we're going to party like it's 1839. Yes, uh, party and, like it's 1839. Uh, it's Saturday, uh, uh, September 23rd. Uh, from nine in the morning to five in the, or so mm -hmm. in the afternoon, uh, it is a free registration. Yes. Uh, an online registration, so I encourage you to go to our Arts Altoona Facebook page, find it there. Go to Penn State Altoona uh, Community Based Studies, find it there, and you can register online. Um, who are some of the local uh, talents that people may recognize from Penn State Altoona or otherwise that are going to be part of this day? Well, we have several uh, artists that are joining us up here. Uh, Steve Sherrill is a local uh, award-winning uh, author. He's a faculty member at Penn State Altoona, and he's, um, he's going to start out the day, really. He's, uh, he's going to read from a, a novel he wrote Oh, 2007, I, 2008, somewhere in there, called the Lock Tender's House, and this is an, this is a really interesting uh, story. It's actually a ghost story, hmm. but he's going to uh, read selections of it that really kind of speak to the mysterious character of the Pennsylvania Canal, and that's what this is all about: the celebration of the Pennsylvania Canal, 1834, 1857, a little longer than that, really. But the Pennsylvania Canal is something that is really a hidden history in Pennsylvania. There's no real clear uh, history that, that can be seen. So you kind of really have to, to dig and, and, and to kind of sort through the remains of what's there. Uh, Allegheny Portage site right here is one of the very few uh, areas that really pull together a lot of the history of that railroad. And Steve's uh, readings are going to kind of speak to that mysterious uh, character of the canal. Uh, and so Steve's going to be reading for us to kind of set the mood uh, of the festival, which is really an inquiry. Uh, this is an inquiry into what was the canal all about. Hmm. Uh, and we're going to learn about that through song, primarily. We're going to have uh, some, uh, some, as you say, local people, Jerry Zoltan. Uh, very, a lot of people will yeah, recognize. Yeah, very, very well-known uh, musician. Uh, and other things around and researcher here. of of music the yes roots of, uh, of and that is Rome his interest here things, because right. this 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 uh, this uh, canal era music really speaks to the roots of rock and roll and that's his thing uh, and so he's going to be involved in it some of the students are going to be coming up uh, so we're going to have uh, some uh, some presence of Penn State Altoona, both faculty and students. Mm -hmm. So we've got Steve Sherrill, we've got uh, Jerry Zolt, and we'll also Brian Cutsforth Huber, who is a vocalist, uh, mu uh, faculty member in music, who is going to be uh, with her students singing some of the ballads hmm. uh, of the area over the little lunch time that we're going to have uh, for those who register. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm always interested in what's for lunch, so uh, it sounds lunch? kind of interesting. What, uh, what's lunch, for lunch is interesting this time because as part of this event, we were we were able to put this on partly through a grant uh, 
that we got through the Sustainability Communities Collaborative. Hmm. And that grant stipulated that while it was a great event, that what we really needed to do was to make it a um, eco-friendly, zero net waste uh, kind of festival. And so what we have done is to plan the menu, as it were, uh, the lunch menu and the snacks, so that they're all locally sourced foods and that all the, uh, all the materials are either compostable locally or that they, are, uh, they can be recycled locally as well. Sure. So that's that's an important part of what we're doing here, kind of showcasing the, the possibility of doing that. It's a small festival, but still, it's uh, you know you can do it in eco-friendly fashion or not. And mm -hmm. so we're be doing that. Very good. Um, I know you have some out of town talent uh, too. There's a, a gentleman headlining uh, from a, a, a group that has chocolate drops in their name. So yes. what's that about? Well, this is uh, thanks again to Jerry Zoltan, who is, has many professional friends uh, and Jerry was kind enough to kind of make a plug for our little festival for a fellow by the name of Dom Flemings. Dom Flemings is, uh, is a Grammy winning artist. Uh, he's a, he plays multiple instruments, sings. Uh, he, really, and he really is in the tradition of what used to be called the American Songster. And the Songsters used to be uh, really these traveling musicians of the 19th century with really some roots in, in minstrelsy. Uh, going back uh, before the Civil War. And so there's kind of a, a history there that um, is, is interesting, let's put it that way. It certainly fits with the Canal era. Yes, and, and you can't escape it right. when you're talking about the Canal era because it's a big part of it. That was popular music in the Canal era, and there were some racial overtones to that. Uh, and what Dom and the Carolina Chocolate Drops did and what was so innovative and unique was to kind of pull and recover black musicianship, African American musicianship, from the shadow of that minstrel, minstrel uh, tradition. And so the American songster, as Don Fleming portrays him, is someone who is tells stories, plays different types of music, typically with, with the instrumentation of uh, old roots African American types of, of uh, uh, instruments. So, uh, and, and he's a very, very exciting uh, performer. I had the, the pleasure of seeing him in Harrisburg a couple of years ago. Very, very dynamic performer. Looking forward to it. Um, yeah. I know I saw a little video of him playing something called the Bones. Oh, yes. Uh, which are some wooden sticks that you hold yep. in your hands in a certain way and click together. And he's just yeah. phenomenal. Uh, on he, he's the, an amazing musician. He's a, he, his prowess on banjo is, is unbelievable. And his voice. Uh, he, he's a singer. Of, he can capture so many things with his voice. It's, it's just it's, it's unbelievable. Terrific. Uh, but Dom's not the only one. We have we have right. two other uh, people or we're, we're groups we're bringing. One is from uh, uh, upstate New York, Brockport, New York, actually. Uh, Bill Hullfish and the Golden Eagle String Band. They are going to focus in. They are focusing on canal music. Uh, canal music is kind of a, a strange breed in itself. What do you, you don't really hear about canal music as a typical genre of music, <laughs> right. right? And it really is a combination. It's definitely a niche. It is a niche. Uh, this band is very famous. They were, uh, uh, they are, uh, Smithsonian Folkways uh, mm. artists, uh, gold medalists actually, uh, in, that, in that name. So they've traveled around the Northeast uh, doing this kind of canal music. And, uh, it's, it's a really interesting kind of, so, some of it's fun, some of it's dark, some of it's jaunty. It's a combination of, of different kinds mm -hmm. of things. And so while they're playing their canal music, the second, uh, or the third actual, actual uh, group that we're bringing in is a group from Gettysburg, very well known for period uh, folk music. Uh, this, this group is called Dearest Home, um, and they uh, perform on period instruments, the folk music of the day, ballads in particular, and a lot of vocal uh, tunes. Remember back then, it, the music of that era was not typically what we think of music today. It was very individual. Um, it was songs about what 
an individual was experiencing. Very little social commentary. Mm. Uh, music was used to pass the time, to to just think about and, and, and talk about what you're seeing or doing or hearing, uh, as well as to kind of long for people who were lost. Mm. Yeah, the canal brought over a lot of Irish immigrants and Welsh right. immigrants, and they're famous for the ballads that they, uh, they mm. sang. I, I grew up in upstate New York, and certainly the canal through that era, part of the country, is uh, very much tied in with the canal through this part of it. Everyone watching us may not be aware of exactly what the Allegheny Portage Railroad is and what it has to do with the canal. Can you explain that briefly? I shall give it my best shot. Um, I know you're not the park ranger. Here, but. <laughs> No. Park Ranger Bosley yes, will be involved in the day, yes, I believe. Yes, he will. So Absolutely. He can speak for himself that day, but yes. for now. <laughs> no, the Allegheny Portage Railroad was an essential piece of what's called the Pennsylvania Canal. The Pennsylvania Canal was really not just a canal. Uh, the Pennsylvania Canal was a series of very early railroads and canals uh, that went from, from uh, Philadelphia all the way to Pittsburgh. Uh, and of course, there was elevation changes and, and things like that. And so you had the uh, canals and there were locks built in the canals. There were 88 locks built in the <laughs> Juniata Division wow. of the canal alone. And so this was a huge public uh, works project. But the big problem comes when you get to where... To this mountain To this system. mountain that we have, <laughs> this big thing in the middle of it all that gets in the way of connecting uh, Philadelphia to Pittsburgh. And so at the time, the, the engineers came upon this, this idea that we would just build a, quote, railroad. Really was a series of pulleys, planes and pulleys. And so the, the canal boats would uh, get out of the canal at Hollidaysburg. We would actually pull them. Pulled out of the water. Pulled out of the water at Hollidaysburg, put on tracks on the trucks, really. What we would trucks. call flatbeds yes. today, more or less. Yes, and then they would be hooked up in the early years to to mules. A little bit later, a couple years after the railroad got started, we had steam engines that would pull them along the flat uh, portions of, of, the, of the Allegheny Portage Railroad. And then from, from Hollidaysburg, what's called Foot of Ten, actually, in Duncansville, they would start their trip up the mountain. They'd be pulled up a series of five planes. And they would be pulled up by these big um, steam engines, steam engines that would literally haul the boats uh, up, up, up the uh, up the mountain. And at the same time, it hauled them down the mountain, and then they'd get off the railroad and be put back into the uh, canal basin at Johnstown. Right. And uh, so this was uh, the linchpin of the Pennsylvania Canal System as it worked for 20 years. Right. Uh, Absolutely. And uh, yeah, so it, it was absolutely central, and it's, it's wonderful to have this place that celebrates that history. Well, I know I signed up for the De Canal Jam uh, earlier today, mm -hmm. and one of the things I found interesting was, was I planning to bring an instrument uh, to participate yes. in the, the musical jam? I am not musical. I enjoy watching performances, listening to performances. I am not a performer, but for those who might be or want to join in, what, what's that about? And that, you don't have I to guess be that's a musician. Where the jam that is the jam. Yes, it's, it's a canal jam. And so after we have these performers perform, at the end of the day, we're going to get together, weather permitting, in the amphitheater here at the park. And we're going to do kind of a round robin affair with the, uh, the, the, the performers on stage. But we're inviting everybody there to come in and bring an instrument and play. We're going to have song sheets and music, music sheets available so that you can kind of follow along. You don't have to be a good musician. Uh, hopefully we'll have some, you know, some shakers and things for those people who don't uh, play an instrument. But uh, from what we have seen so far, there are a number of people who are going to bring along instruments. Right. And, and so that will be the last hour of the day. Okay. It will be kind of the, the ending celebration. Uh, Wonderful. Yeah. Um, what was the attendance like when you did this uh, in the past? We had about 100, 110 people. Okay. Involved. All right. Is there a cutoff number for this year? Well, uh, you know, there's only so many people yeah, you this can is get a, in some of these venues. This is a fairly intimate venue, actually, right. and the, the auditorium holds about 80 
hmm. people max. So um, we're hoping that people will sign up uh, fairly quickly because it will, we anticipate, based on last time. Last it times, may well max out. It may well max out. Okay. So. All right. So again, Saturday, uh, September 23rd, basically all day, 9 to 5, uh, and registration is available online. Tom, are, is there anything else that we didn't cover that you'd like to uh, add in or reiterate? I just think it's going to be a fun day. Of course, it's going to be a gorgeous day like it is Just today. like today would be fabulous. And uh, that will enable us to have our all-together, all-in jam out at the, out at the uh, amphitheater. Beautiful amphitheater and, here. Uh, we're just going to have a great time. Hope right. you can join us. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Glad to have you here.